Are the children at Bluff Park UMC being plugged in, pumped up, and poured out for Jesus Christ? I know what some of you are thinking. What in the world is Stanley doing up there at this point in the service? And it's a good question, because normally I'm long gone by now. I'm downstairs worshiping with and preaching to the children in Children's Church, and I absolutely love doing that. But this morning, I've been asked to come upstairs to preach in what we in, the children's, in Children's Church call Big Church on something I'm passionate about, and that is the importance of children's ministry within the life of the church. And I am so excited and honored for the opportunity to do so. So our scripture reading this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. And if you'd like to follow along as I read, you can do so in your bulletin, in your pew Bible, or on your personal device. Hear these words. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. And I pray this morning, Lord, that the words that come out of my mouth would be your words and that you would allow us to receive the things you would have us receive this morning and open our hearts and minds. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So as many of you know, I graduated from seminary about a year ago. And on a whole, I loved my seminary experience. And I enjoyed almost every class that I took in seminary, except one. And that was a Hebrew language class. I did not like that class. You see, I think there's a portion of people's brains that allow them to pick up on grasp and learn new languages. And I think mine's broken, because I struggled <laughs> through that class. I struggled learning to read from right to left instead of left to right, to pick up on the syntax and the grammar of the Hebrew language, and even to learn the new squiggly lettered Hebrew alphabet. I did not like that class. But there was one assignment in that class that made the entire class worth taking for me. Near the end of the semester, the professor gave us this assignment, to pick any passage in the Old Testament, to break it down into its original language to see if we could find something and learn something from the original Hebrew language that we couldn't learn from our English translations of the Bible. Knowing that I was being called to work with children in the church, I chose this passage that we read this morning, and I was pleasantly surprised at what I discovered. So Moses had just taught the Israelites all of the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord had told him to teach them. In essence, he had just taught them the ways of the Lord. He tells them that these things are to be on their hearts and that they are to impress them on their children. So for that assignment in that Hebrew class, I focus primarily on that verb impress in verse 7. Impress them on your children. And I love what I found in the process. This Hebrew verb, which is pronounced shanan, is found nine times in the Old Testament. And in the other eight places besides our verse, it's used in a military setting to describe something sharp or the act of sharpening one's sword or spear. So Moses, by using this particular word, was drawing the Israelites' mind to the sharpening of a weapon and equating it to teaching their children the ways of the Lord. And I believe we can learn three things from this. First, the sharpening of one's weapon was a matter of life and death for the Israelites. If a soldier went into battle with a dull blade, their chances of survival greatly reduced. And vice versa, if they went into battle with a sharp blade, their chances of survival could only increase. And by equating this to teaching their children the ways of the Lord, Moses was helping them see the great importance and significance of this task. It was literally a matter of life and death. Secondly, in Old Testament times, the way that one sharpened their sword or spear was by rubbing it over and over and over against a whetstone. One couldn't sharpen their weapon by spending a small amount of time in the process. In the same way, Moses was telling the Israelites that they could not teach their children the ways of the Lord by teaching them once or twice. It was something they would need to do over and over and over as their children were growing. And lastly, the sharpening of the weapon by the soldier made the weapon that much stronger than it had been before the sharpening. And in the same way, Moses was implying that the Israelite children would be much stronger after they had been sharpened in the ways of the Lord. So as you can see, by using this Hebrew verb shanan, Moses was showing the Israelites that teaching their children the ways of the Lord was extremely important. 
that it was something they should do over and over and over again as their children were growing, and that it would make their children stronger in the Lord. And even though Moses was speaking to the Israelites in the time of the Old Testament, I believe that the principles of this verse are easily transferable to us living in the time after the New Testament, and that we should make it of utmost importance to sharpen our children in the ways of the Lord and the love of Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'd love to share with you the ways we're trying to do these things in the children's ministry at Bluff Park UMC, to share with you our goals for children's ministry. To make them easier to remember, a long time ago, me and a group of people I worked with began to call them the three important P's of children's ministry. Plugged in, pumped up, and poured out. So to begin with, our goal, desire, and prayer is that all the children that attend Bluff Park UMC would be plugged into a relationship with Jesus Christ. In order to do this in creative ways, we teach our children the basics of the Christian faith, paying special attention to the following. One, God created all of us. Two, God loves each of us more than we can possibly imagine. Three, because of this love, God sent His Son Jesus to live, die, and be resurrected for us so that we can one day go to heaven and live with Him. Four, Jesus wants us to follow Him and be His best friend. And five, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are always there for us and can help us when we're scared, worried, or in trouble. We teach these basics of the Christian faith in a number of ways, but the major ways are through creatively telling Bible stories and singing Christian songs. If you've ever taught children, been around children, or had children of your own, you know that they can be a little bit crazy. I'm looking at you kids. They can have short attention spans, and there is no way they are going to let you sit them down and lecture them on the basics of the Christian faith for 15 to 20 minutes. It's not going to happen. But by creatively telling Bible stories and singing Christian songs, it allows them to learn these basics of faith in a way suited to them. So we creatively tell Bible stories. And every time we tell Bible stories, we focus on one of those five major points, and we stress it at the end of the story. In addition, we're constantly singing to and listening to Christian songs that teach our children the Christian faith. We sing or have music playing a lot because there's something powerful about music that allows the words and ideas being expressed to stick in their heads and be remembered for a long time. And by doing these things, our fervent prayer is that at some point along their path through the children's ministry, the Holy Spirit would move in their lives and they would be plugged into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And even if that doesn't happen during their time with us, we pray that something we said or taught them would be used by the Holy Spirit later in their lives, and they would form a relationship with Christ. So that's our first goal, to get our children plugged into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our second goal is to get our children pumped up or growing in that relationship with Christ. And we do this in three major ways. First, we teach our children to pray, or to put it simply, to talk to God. We teach them they can pray to God about anything, anytime, and anywhere. We teach them they can pray to God to tell Him thank you. Pray when they need help or they're in trouble. Or to pray for others when they need help or in trouble. Or just when they need someone to talk to. And we give them lots of opportunities to practice prayer while they're here at church. So prayer is the first way we teach our children to grow in their relationship with God. The second way is through reading the Bible. We teach the kids that the Bible is a very important book that God wrote for them to teach them who God is, how much He loves them, and how He wants them to live their lives. Throughout elementary school, we teach our children the books of the Bible, how to look up books, chapters, and verses in the Bible, and generally how to use their Bibles. When a child reaches the third grade, we provide them with their own personal copy of God's Word, and we encourage them to read it on their own with God. And we encourage all of our children to memorize passages of God's Word. And through learning the Bible in these ways, we pray that the children would go stronger in their relationship with God by learning about Him and how He wants us to live. And lastly, when we tell Bible stories to the children, or we encourage them to read the Bible on their own, we teach them to ask the so what question. We don't only want them to have a head knowledge of who God is and how He wants us to live. We don't only want them to know the Bible and Bible stories, but we want them to begin to apply those things to their lives. So after telling the children a Bible story, or having them read it on their own, we ask them to think about how it applies to their lives. How should they act differently based on what they've learned in that Bible story or that Bible verse? And after we've talked about that application, we encourage them to actually do that in their lives. So that's our second goal, to get our children pumped up or growing in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And our last goal, our last P, is poured out. Our prayer and desire is that the children of Bluff Park will take what they have personally learned about the love of Jesus Christ, and they will pour that love out into their peers, their families, their community, and the world. 
One way we encourage our children to do this is through that so what question I just mentioned. As we read and teach stories of Jesus loving and caring for his friends, people he didn't know, and even outcasts that no one else wanted to be around, we ask our children how they can do that in their lives, and we give them examples of ways that they can do it. Another way we encourage them to pour out the love of Christ is by giving them opportunities to do so while they're here at church. Along this line, we take five to six mission slash field trips a year where we pair a mini mission project with a fun activity. We also have a mission Sunday for both our preschool kids and our elementary school kids during Sunday school once a month. Examples of things we do at these mission events include shopping for and packing school supplies, hams, blankets, and Christmas presents for people, and especially kids in our community who are in need of them. And we make cards and craft projects for our church's shut-ins, for people in prison, for the local garbage man, for police officers, firemen, and on and on. And in all of these things, we remind the children that the reason we do them is because we know how much Jesus loves us and that we should share that love with others. So these are the goals of the children's ministry at Bluff Park UMC, that the children would be plugged into a relationship with Jesus Christ, that they would be pumped up or growing in that relationship, and that the love of Jesus Christ would be poured out into others, their community, and the world. And this isn't just our goal for our kids here at Bluff Park that regularly come. It's our goal for all the kids that we have the privilege of coming into contact with over the course of the year. That's why we spend so much time, money, and energy making the Halloween carnival, the Easter egg hunt, vacation Bible school, something that the children who attend will thoroughly enjoy, something they'll want to come back to, and somewhere where they can learn about who Jesus Christ is and what he means to them. Even though the majority of the kids at these events do not regularly attend Bluff Park, our prayer and desire is that because of events like these, some of those kids and their families would return to Bluff Park on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, and that we could help them be plugged in, pumped up, and poured out. And that even if that doesn't happen, even if those kids never come back to Bluff Park on a Wednesday or Sunday, that something we did at those events could be a stepping stone for the Holy Spirit to do something in here at some point in their lives. Now, I know this sounds good coming out of my mouth, and it looks good on paper, but the big question is, is it working? Are the children at Bluff Park UMC being plugged in, pumped up, and poured out for Jesus Christ? I firmly believe that the Holy Spirit is moving within the children's ministry at Bluff Park. I think you see it in the fact that our numbers are growing, in the fact that the children are excited to be here, in the fact that they're excited to lead the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed, and in the fact that they're beginning to get these things that we've been talking about these morning, this morning. I could tell you many stories of where I've seen evidence of the children beginning to grasp these things, but I don't have time. So I've chosen one, probably my favorite children's ministry moment of the last year. So this past spring, we took a group of 17 fourth and fifth graders to exit 456, an overnight retreat at Camp Simatonga for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And when I say we took 17 fourth and fifth graders, I really mean we took 16 fourth graders and one fifth grader. We were one of the youngest groups at this retreat. We had some of the youngest kids at this retreat. But it was a great retreat. And the kids learned a lot of the things we've been talking about this morning. Who God is, how much God loves them, how they can grow in a relationship with Him. It was a great retreat. And at the end of the retreat, the lead speaker got up. And he invited all the kids, over 300 kids at this retreat, to come up at the end of this weekend, kneel at the altar, and spend some time talking with God about some things they had learned. And as their children's minister, I was excited for our kids. I was excited they were going to have this opportunity to end this great week in growing in their relationship with God by praying with him about what they had learned. And so as some of the other kids in the room began to get up and head towards the altar, I glanced out of the corner of my eyes at our kids, and nobody moved. They were a little bit wide-eyed. They were looking at their friends. They were looking at all the other kids in the room, and it was apparent to me by the look on their face they were not going to go up to that altar and pray. And I was a little bit disappointed. Not at our kids, because I was the exact same way at their age. There is no way I'd have gotten up in front of 300 people and prayed at the altar. But I was disappointed that they weren't going to get to spend this time growing with God at the end of a great weekend. So I began to pray. I began to pray for our kids, all the other kids in the room, for a safe bus ride home. And as I was praying, I feel a little tug at my sleeve. And I look down, and it's one of our girls. And she looks up at me, and she says, Mr. Stanley... Do you care if I go up there and pray? And I said, of course not. And there she went, in front of all of her friends and in front of over 300 other kids in the room. She walked down the aisle, she knelt at the altar, and she began to pray. And one 
by one by one, almost every other child in our group followed her up there, knelt down, and began to pray. They were growing in their relationship with God right in front of my eyes. And I was so proud of them and so proud to be their children's minister in that moment. And stories like this one, and others I don't have time to tell, show me that the Holy Spirit is moving within the children's ministry at Bluff Park. And that our children are being plugged in, pumped up, and poured out for Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that as I've been up here describing these things, there's some of you out there who have been thinking, that's awesome. How can I help? Well, I'm glad you hypothetically asked. <laughs> I want to offer two ways that each and every person here can help us in the children's ministry in the next year. Number one, the most important way, pray for us. I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe that we need to be praying for the children of our church, that they would be plugged in, pumped up, and poured out. Pray for our volunteers and our teachers, that God would give us the wisdom to teach these kids the things we've been talking about this morning in a way they will understand at their level. This morning, I want to give some of, you, some of you the opportunity to commit to praying for some of our kids over the next year. As you leave the sanctuary this morning, there's going to be a booth set up in the narthex. Two, two members of my children's council are going to be there at that booth, and there's going to be a lot of cards laid out on the table. Each card has the name of a child within the children's ministry at Bluff Park. And if you feel so led, would you go by that booth as you leave, pick up one of those cards, and commit to praying for that kid over the course of the next year? So that's the first way you can help us, is through praying for us. Second way, and this is really easy, when you come into contact with children at our church, let them know that this is a place where they are loved, honored, valued, and important. In whatever way that means to you, whether it's smiling at a kid, whether it's asking a kid how their day went or how their week went, whether it's coming and volunteering in the children's ministry and hanging out with some of these cool kids, or here's the easiest thing you can do. You see me doing it all the time in the hallways of our church. When you see a kid coming towards you, hold up your hand like this. Universal sign for high five. And I haven't met a kid yet that when they hit your hand, they don't get the biggest smile on their face, and they don't feel loved, honored, valued, and important. And that's how we want the kids of our church to feel while they are here at Bluff Park UMC. And I believe that by doing these things and all the other things I've mentioned this morning, that we as a unified church can help the children of our church and the children of our community to be plugged in, pumped up, and poured out for Jesus Christ, and we can help sharpen them in the ways of the Lord and the love of Jesus Christ. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.